Okay, everyone, we're back again for more of the GameFest CD. Let's go ahead and get into it, because uh, we're almost done with this uh, adventure game section, the so-called adventure game section. I think I've already mentioned several times that most of these are not really adventure games. But anyway, last time we did Last Half of Darkness, which was a sort of adventure game, kind of a point-and-click adventure game, but now we're doing Monuments of Mars. Actually, I think all three of these final games from this section are Apogee games, uh, which is not a bad thing, but uh, they're, all, they're all basically action games. So this is, okay, Soft ADV Mars. Let's take a look. Is there a readme file here? Don't see one. I wonder what that file that's just called name is. Okay, it's Mars, comma, Mars 1. Okay, that's nice. Oh, wait, there is a doc, doc, doc. Okay, doc, doc. Doctor, doctor. Uh, okay, very nice ASCII art. Well, I was right about this game anyway. This is definitely an Apogee game. Um, so... The following quotes and comments are real. The quotes are extracted from thousands and thousands of letters sent to Scott Miller of Apogee Software. Wow. Okay, this is about the Cross games. And boy, people got very excited about those Cross games. And this is more about Cross. In case anyone's never noticed, that is obviously Zork backwards. It's obviously, I mean, it's... Uh, the, uh, something else about Cross. I actually can't even read that ASCII text, to be honest. Okay, here's Commander Keen. Absolutely brilliant EGA graphics game. Pharaoh's Tomb. Yeah, okay. The Monuments of Mars, which is this game that we're about to see. Wow. Special note, due to the immense animation requirements of this game, it will not function on the original style IBM PCs that use the 8088 microprocessor. Wow. Uh, you're about to see just how immense the animation requirements for this game are. Uh, uh, I can't even... Oh, Caves of Thor. Okay, good thing that, that was written below because I couldn't read that. This looks like it says... Red Franny or something like that. I have no idea what this is. I don't even I don't even know what the heck. Programmers only. Source code is available. All Apogee games were programmed using Turbo Pascal version 3.0 or 5.0. Wow. Wow, how times have changed since then. Alright, let's go ahead and play this game with the immense graphics require the immense animation requirements, and you'll see it's uh Yeah, there you go. The Monuments of Mars by Todd. I actually don't know how to pronounce that gentleman's last name. Uh, Replogal? His name shows up in a lot of Apogee games uh, of this era, but anyway. All right, so Volume 1. Uh, yes, S special notice. It has very complex graphics and animation. Yes, let's, let's see just how... Um, okay, I'll press S so we can read the story so far. This is the story. Okay, that was the story. Instructions. I guess these are instructions. All right. Oh, it even has graphics. See, you can see just how immense the, the graphics for the game are. All right, and it actually showed that same warning a third time. All right, let's just go ahead and journey onward. All right, this this is the game. This is the game with such immense graphics requirements that they, they had to put in a special note saying it wouldn't run on original IBM PCs because this is just just too immense. You can actually... Yeah, shift actually shoots at those things, but it kind of pays to conserve your shots because I only have four shots. Obviously, I started with five, but I have four now, so yeah. You can choose to shoot these things or not, but in general, it's probably better to save your shots if you can because it's uh, it's not a... Oops. Oh, I accidentally shot twice that time. That was a waste. Yeah, this game, uh, it's not exactly serious, Sam. You do want to uh, do want to conserve on your ammunition because it's... Uh, Kind of a actually, it's it's kind of a puzzle game. You you could you could make the case that in some ways it's kind of a puzzle game. It does incorporate some puzzle elements, um, in the style of some uh, some platformers. Let's see, how do I flip the switch? Uh, I don't remember how to flip switches in this game. Control and Alt don't seem to be doing it. Uh, uh oh. I could be stuck here because I don't remember how to flip a switch. Uh, 
pressing oh enter okay enter flip that switch and picking up that little token caused something to happen and now I can either fall down to my death on those spikes or I can pick up that thing or I can pick up that thing which was more shots or I can get get stuck here or I can pick up that thing all right, so you get the idea. This is this is the game with the really immense graphical requirements. Oh, and that was a key card that I just picked up there, I think, which allows me to go through there, which leads me to the next level. So, all right. Um, I think what you've seen pretty much says it all. This is basically um, this is basically what pretty much the whole game looks like. It's not a bad game by any means, and for its time, it was probably... Uh, it was probably better than some games, I'm sure. Um, and it, it certainly has its appeal even today. I mean, I, I, I don't mean to denigrate this game in any way because it... it whoops. Oh, I died. All right, well, let's just get out of that. Yeah, let's quit. Oh, I actually got 6th place in the high scores. Not bad for only playing for a few minutes. Oh, wow, this game actually makes reference to Roger Wilco. That's interesting. And Captain Comic. Commander Keen's not so surprising because that's another Apogee game, but it's interesting that they would reference a couple of other games from other companies. Uh, but anyway, all right, whatever. Well, all right. Wow, that, that those two guys are twitching their legs very frantically on the sides of the screen there, too. Well. All right, anyway. That was Monuments of Mars. So, yeah. Definitely not an adventure game, but, uh, well, it's something. Anyway, all right, Paganitsu. Uh, somebody said they're looking forward to this game. I'm not exactly sure why, because it's, well, let's just play it in uh, soft action Paga. I am pretty sure this is also an Apogee game. Why is there a today.txt? What's today.txt? Oh, this is some kind of BBS, I guess. I'm going to guess that BBS doesn't exist anymore. Um, is there a documentation file here? I don't see one. All right, let's just run Paga1. So here we go. Yes, another Apogee game. Apogee Software Productions proudly presents. It has been three long years since Alabama Smith, famous... That's obviously another Indiana Jones reference, just like in Arctic Adventure... A uh, famous archaeologist and part-time treasure hunter explored and escaped from the ruined Aztec pyramid Chagunitsu. This is a sequel to Chagunitsu. Uh, Chagunitsu is not on this CD to be found, but Ch Chagunitsu was an older Apogee game, and this is the sequel. Uh, that expedition was very profitable, and soon his deeds were famous all around the world. Alas, all you know what, I'm not going to read all that. Uh, that's fine. All right, Romancing the Rose uh, is the first part of Paganitsu. Uh, so we can, I guess, say about Paganitsu. And, oh, there's uh, there's our protagonist, I guess, looking at a uh, spider that's uh, coming down to make his acquaintance. Uh, yeah, so this game had three parts. This was the usual shareware model. The first part is shareware. The other two parts you are expected to pay for. Uh, let's go ahead and play the game. So here we go. You've entered the shadowy halls of Paganitsu. Good luck on your journey, adventurer. This is Paganitsu. Um, basically, yeah, it's a uh, it's a puzzle game. So yeah, don't walk in front of those snakes because they have the ability to shoot at you and you'll die. Uh, but you can push rocks in front of them like that. And this water, you can't really do anything with the water, but you can pick up keys, and you can uh, pick up those blue gems. And I guess you have to pick up all the keys in the, uh, in the level. If you notice, the key counter on the left went down when I picked up the first key. It started off at two keys, and now it's down to zero, which means uh, it's showing not how many keys I have, but how many keys I still have to get. All right. Oh, bonus points. Is that for a time bonus? I guess, that, yeah, it's for the time bonus, because the, the bonus keeps counting down on the left. Um, I played through this game quite a bit when I was young. Oh, you have discovered an inscription on the wall. Roughly translated, it reads... It's a song by that hit rock group, Daggers and Roses. 
Take me down to Paganitsu City, where the grass ain't green and the girls ain't pretty. Uh, I actually saw this when I played this game many years before I ever heard Paradise City by Guns N' Roses, and I thought that this was wonderfully eloquent when I played this game at the age of probably 10 or, or something, or I guess I was a bit older than 10, but not much. Um, and when I finally heard the song, it was a bit disappointing because um, it kind of repeats that one lyric over and over. It's like one of those songs. I mean, the, the tune is a bit catchy for the first... Anyway, I'm not going to become... A, I don't want to be a music critic right now. Um, so obviously you can try to get those blue gems if you want to try to avoid getting caught by these spiders, but that's kind of tricky to do, especially since, whoa, the movement controls on this game don't seem to be very responsive. I'm not sure why. Our character doesn't seem to be responding very well to my key presses, so it's... Uh, if you really want to try braving those spiders, you can try it and get those blue gems for a few extra points, but I'm not going to bother. Uh, instead, let's go on to room three. And room three... Okay, so we have six keys that I need to get. And all of this seems pretty straightforward at first, but I think, yeah. So that snake won't shoot me if that key is between me and him. So I'm going to actually push this down here, and that will then enable me to... Uh, hold on. Actually, let's, let's do this. Let's push that down there. And then I can get that, and that, and that, and also that. And then I can push this over to the right like that. There we go. Not an especially difficult puzzle. They do get harder later. I think there are also... Oh, there we go. I still remember that. I can't believe I still remember that secret uh, after all these years. Is there more? There are little secrets like that to be found in this game here and there. Um, <laughs> I like the way those snakes change direction when I... Uh, anyway. Alright. Oh, I got an extra life. That's nice. Hint. Try trapping the spider between the boulders. Okay, that's good advice. I think... Oh, there we go. You have discovered an inscription on the wall. We've translated it reads, If a spider is completely restricted from movement, it will suffocate and explode. It's entrails becoming diamonds. That it's should not contain a, an apostrophe, I believe. All right. So yeah, so your challenge here is obviously to get that spider stuck between, uh, between a rock and a hard place. I'm just looking for secrets here. I guess there are none here. Yeah, the game does have uh, a fair number of secrets to discover. And, oh, I see. I can't get through those two boulders as they are. I have to push this down. Whoops. Uh, Whoopsie-daisy. Wow, that spider really tore me apart. I was trying to push the boulder down uh, when the spider was in a spot where it could have gotten trapped, but for some reason that didn't work. Um, is it worth trying again? Okay, I'll try one more time just to see what happens. Let's get out of the way of the spider there. And, whoops, that was a stupid thing to do, because now, now I am stuck. Yeah, I can't push the boulder. Oh, wait, no, doch, I can still, oh, come on. I can, of course I can. I can still push it down to trap the spider. There we go. All right. And is there anything down here? No secrets here? I guess not. All right. So it kind of... It kind of combines action with a uh, hint by pushing a boulder into the water. Hmm, I don't remember what happens when you push a boulder into the water. I did actually play this game quite a bit. Oh, come on. Stupid spiders. What happens if I push the boulder? Oh, it just somehow makes both the, the boulder and the water disappear. All right, that's convenient. Anyway, so it's Paganitsu. It's pretty much a basic puzzle game. There's not really that much to it, I guess. Uh, but it's it's certainly pleasant enough to play. Um, I don't think it really stands out from a crowd of similar games like Boulder Dash and um, really countless other uh, sort of clone games that try to emulate a similar style. But, but I mean, it's not bad. Sort of along the lines of like a cross between Boulder Dash and Sokoban, maybe. 
with some other Indiana Jones stuff mixed in. I don't know. Anyway, pretty nice game. Um, but uh, yeah, let's let's move on. Quit to the title menu. Yes, let's quit and exit to DOS. All right. And let's go ahead and look at the last game in the list, which is Secret Agent. This is in Soft ADV Secret. And this, does this have any documentation? No, not that I'm seeing. Okay, pretty straightforward. Help and or description for this program may be included in the program itself. Well, that's useful. All right. Anyway. So yeah, Secret Agent, Mission 1, the, uh, the Hunt for Red Rock Rover. Uh, I have played this game previously in a previous video when I was blabbering about some other stuff, so those of you who have regularly followed my channel uh, will find that this game is nothing new to them. But I mean, yeah, it's it's a basic platformer. Uh, if you remember Crystal Caves, it's basically it's basically Crystal Caves. It's, it's uh, obviously the same engine. Um, very nearly the same gameplay. I mean, I guess there have been some minor changes to stuff like the enemies and the the weapons and stuff like that, but it's basically Crystal Caves. Uh, which is not a bad thing, because Crystal Caves was a, a good game. And I actually always liked this game more than Crystal Caves. I can't really explain definitively why, I just somehow always preferred this one, um, maybe even just because of the the graphical style or the, the thematic elements of the plot. I guess I thought that being a, a secret spy was somehow cooler than uh, being a, a treasure hunter. I don't know. kind of goes to show how much uh, people react to themes in games, because you can make a game that's about something, and the game itself can be a complete knockoff. It can be a complete... Uh, complete ripoff of, you know, slider puzzles or Sokoban games or something like that. But if you couch it in some kind of plot or theme that appeals to something that people like, then somehow that will really make it appeal to them, even if as a game it's completely derivative and uninteresting. So maybe just the fact that, again, being a secret agent was to me more interesting than being a, a, a crystal caveman or whatever, uh, whatever it is in that game, I guess somehow that appealed to me. But anyway... So yeah, uh, again, not a game that I really feel the need to play for very long in this demonstration video because, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a nice little platformer. It's definitely a nice little game, but uh, not anything that I really uh, have very much to say about other than what I already have said. So let's see, can I get this fella? There we go. And I picked up the floppy disk, and now I have to go all the way back to that computer that was on the right-hand side to turn off that laser beam, and then we're almost at the exit, but I'm not going to bother with that. Let's just quit out of that and come to DOS. So, there we go. That was Secret Agent. And with that, we've come to the end of the Adventure Games section of the Game Fest CD. And at this point, I uh, am a little sad to announce, I know that some people will be disappointed by this, I'm actually planning on taking a bit of a break from making these videos for now. There are a couple of reasons for that. Um, one reason is because it seems like these videos have become a lot less popular over the last few episodes. I still have a few hundred views, and I should be grateful for those few hundred views, but it definitely seems like people are, a lot of people are starting to get tired of... Uh, of me doing this series. Uh, but not only that, I think also um, at this point the quality of the, or not necessarily the quality, but at least how interesting the games are to watch tapers off here. For example, in the next section of strategy games, there are quite a few games here, but most of these are all very similar games. Uh, most of them are games, um, I mean, exactly as the title says, they're like puzzle or strategy games, which is interesting if you really get into it, but it's not necessarily that interesting to see them uh, for just five minutes at a time. I I myself would probably enjoy it, but I think a lot of people wouldn't. Uh, oh, this game called Adventure is actually, I think that's the original Crystal Caves. Wait, is that right? Sophomore 8 Pro 11? Uh, 
I think so. Yes, Colossal Cave. This is actually the original, uh, the original Colossal Cave implemented in PDS Fortran. Wow. Oh, ask would you like instructions, and I type look. Uh, no, it's fine. Uh, so yeah, this is actually one of the uh, pioneering original. Uh, um, you can make the descriptions more verbose by, oh, maybe there's a different command to make the descriptions more verbose, but anyway. Um, yeah, this is was one of the very first text adventures. I remember playing through this. Uh, okay, so actually there, there are more adventure games on this CD than I thought. This is actually, I guess, a fourth adventure game in addition to those that we saw previously. Okay, so that's nice. That's uh, the original adventure, Colossal Cave. But a lot of these, like Aquaman, Arctic Adventure, Balloon Challenge, I think many of these games, if not most of them, are actually from Solo Software. Uh, and Solo Software, I think I've mentioned previously, made a lot of these shareware strategy puzzle games for DOS back in the day. But um, to go through all of them now would be a bit, uh, I don't know, somehow it doesn't really seem like it would be that thrilling for any of you folks. Uh, just looking at the games here that are... Oh, Green. I did make a video featuring Green many years ago, like several, several years ago. Uh, it's a game about pitting planters against pavers. Basically, your enemies are these pavers who want to make a parking lot out of your farmer's fields, and then you control these farmers who are trying to drive out the pavers by growing more plants to scare away the pavers. Um, yeah, Mahjong Solitaire, Mastermind. I mean, it's a very classic sort of logic puzzle game. Mice Man is another solo software game. Milborn, that's a card game, which some of you might have seen. It's actually a pretty decent Im implementation of the card game, um, but I'm not really that inclined to play it right now because I'm trying to trying to come to a conclusion here. Simtrick. Oh, boy, Simtrick is a very interesting game. Uh, it's not a great game, but it's very interesting because it's actually a first-person Star Trek game. If you imagine, remember EGA Trek, which we saw a couple of episodes ago? Imagine a first-person EGA Trek. That's basically it. Sounds cool. Uh, it's not very cool, though. It's actually not a very good game. Um, definitely interesting in terms of the uh, the premise, but in the execution, it's a little uh, little lacking. Um, and Wall Pipes is, yes, it's another Pipe Dream clone, another clone of those sort of pipe laying games where you have water slowly coming out and you have to put down sections of pipe to prevent the water from spilling out. So, uh, and then moving on from here, we have cards games, uh, a whole nine of them. And these are all, as far as I remember, these are all really, Chinese checkers is not a card game, by the way. Uh, but anyway, these, as far as I remember, are, are all straight clones. They're really very straight conversions of these card games to, uh, to PC, even Chinese checkers. I mean, it's not a card game, but it's just a very basic conversion of a board game to PC. So, I mean, if you like card games, then okay, but otherwise, I don't, I don't know how much fun it is to watch somebody play computer adaptations of these games, especially since I don't know how to play most of these games. I actually don't really know how to play uh, Gin Rummy or Euchre um, or Cribbage. I actually have played these games in the past, but it was so long ago that I don't remember the rules anymore. Even stuff like poker and, I mean, Blackjack, I guess I remember, because it's pretty straightforward. You basically just keep choosing to either take a card or stop. That's, that's very straightforward. It's such a straightforward game that I think... Uh, even I remember how to play blackjack, but most of the rest of these, they're not very complicated games. I just don't remember the rules right now, and I'm, I'm not really, quite honestly, I'm not very inclined to learn the rules just to show off how to play a game, which is really not much of a computer video game in the first place. It's basically just a computer adaptation of what is fundamentally a card game. And true to the name, these are Windows games. Most of these don't really strike me as very memorable. Castle of the Winds is a nice RPG. Uh, I actually was into that for a while. Um, Dare to Dream is in it. Oh, it's another adventure game. Uh, Get the Girl. Get the Girl was a weird game. That's basically, it's a, sort of a dating simulator. Um, that sticks out in my memory just for that reason, because, you know, dating simulator, how many of those did you have back in the day? Um, I remember Hero as well. That's kind of a point-and-click sort of adventure, but it's not really... Uh, eh. Anyway, but yeah, these are all Windows games, so they don't run under DOSBox. You'd need to have Windows 3.0 or 3.1 to play these. Actually, a Ouija board, I guess. Um, yeah, 
don't remember. I don't remember a lot of these games. I think I probably didn't play a lot of these games. I do remember World Empire. I think that's a, uh, a Risk clone, sort of. Mouse games, yeah. Drag City was a weird game that's basically just a drag racing game that you play with the two mouse buttons. Um, Nukem is, I think, a missile... Uh, it has nothing to do with Duke Nukem. I think it's a missile command clone or something like that. Sandstorm. Sandstorm is an interesting game. Uh, it's basically um, also kind of a missile defense kind of game. Sequest. I was actually thinking of making a video about Sequest, uh, like a standalone video about Sequest, because it's actually a pretty nice game. It's a very nice strategy game uh, in its own right. Um, but I didn't. I ended up not bothering because um, it's a pretty well-made game, and I like that it is a well-made game. But as a game itself, it's not necessarily that interesting. Shooting gallery is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a shooting gallery. It's kind of fun, but not very remarkable, I guess. Uh, educational games. Again, I mean, I guess you can pretty much kind of guess what what this is. I mean, it's mostly mostly f very average or even below average sort of so-called educational games for kids that teach them very simple math and alphabet stuff like that. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And finally, we have mixed games. Ooh, Air Traffic Controller. I actually like that game. Uh, it's not a very high-quality game, but for some reason it appeals to me just in terms of its simplicity. Air Duel, I remember that being kind of a fun game. Um... Jump Jet. Oh, Jump Jet. That was actually quite a fun game. Um, Leaper. This is basically the same game that we saw before, except in a non-VGA version. I believe this is a CGA version. Oak Flat Nuclear Power Plant Simulator. I have a, uh, a very old video of this game as well, which I was very enthusiastic about. I really like these types of games, these sort of simulators that try to simulate something. Uh, it really is exactly what it sounds like. It really is a simulation of trying to run a nuclear power plant. Protech is a German language pinball game. Silicon City, yeah, it's, Silicon City is kind of a fun strategy game. I remember that as well. VJ Tanks, oh, I think this, uh, wait, is that one? Oh, I think I'm thinking of a different game, never mind. Word Search Creator, yeah. Uh, about shareware, so some information on shareware. Then you can change configuration here. There's not really, yeah, not really much to change here. Um, so I'd like to, I guess, maybe show just a couple of games from some of those sections that kind of stick out in my memory. Uh, but before I do that, I want to quickly show you folks something else. If you go into this directory, soft more two pro sixteen, and look at the stuff there, you see there's a program start.exe. If you run that. This is a whole other set of programs. I think if you press uh, 2, yeah, here we go. This is a whole other set of programs, some of which are not featured in the, uh, in the main menu. And I don't know how you're expected to find this. I just found this randomly one day while going through the contents of the CD. So under Action Games, I guess all of these are in the, in the main program. Adventure Games... I think all these are there as well. Okay, a lot of these are just uh, just uh, relistings of, of things that we've already seen. But some stuff like, what's under new releases? Uh, Duke Nukem 2? Really? Do they actually have bricks and Duke Nukem 2 on, on this? And 3D House, that, uh, that 3D sort of virtual reality kind of simulation? It's um, pretty awesome. More new releases. Solar Winds we've seen. I think most of these we've seen already. Um, business and word processing. I mean, these... Yeah, this kind of stuff... I was thinking about going through some of this stuff just because it's uh, it's just so so interesting in its adorable sort of earnestness. It's just... it's Of course, today it's unthinkable that somebody would actually make a viable word processor at home in their spare time and sell it for money in a world where we have... Open Office and LibreOffice and all kinds of stuff like that. It's it's basically un unimaginable that one guy working as a hobby in his spare time would make a an envelope maker or a thesaurus or a fax sheet maker or something that he could then sell in his spare time, his or her spare time to make some money with. But but you know back then back in the 1980s this was still a potentially viable source of income a potentially uh, viable sort of hobby for programmers who wanted to make some stuff for people in their spare time. Home and hobby, 
personal inventory, PC bartender, a recipe program. I mean, th this stuff is so basic that today you could easily find uh, utilities that do much more advanced things for free on the internet. But back then, boy, boy, those were different times. Really a very different uh, set of times back then when people could uh, could market programs like this to uh, to people using the shareware model and actually have a hope of maybe making some uh, getting some registrations out of it. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, if you just go through the CD, man, you find so much stuff. There's there's a lot of stuff which, for whatever reason, didn't even make it into the 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 m menu into the list in the menu program. So if you just go through the CD, you'll find some weird stuff hidden away here and there that you would otherwise never find unless you just go looking for it and just go exploring. So if you have a copy of the CD or if you find a copy of the CD online, which is pretty easy to do, I I encourage you folks to do some exploring because you'll you'll find some amazing stuff. Seriously. Um, but that having been said, let's exit out of here and go back to the main menu program. And let me just try to quickly see if I can find some stuff to... Uh, uh, what do I... Is there anything I want to show off? Let's take a look at Sandstorm. This is not an especially great game, but it just kind of, for some reason, grabs my attention as something I want to show off. It's not even... I won't even bother looking at the documentation. Let's just quickly run the game. Pod Bay Enterprises. Yeah, it's a pretty pretty straightforward game. It's basically, yeah, I mean, it's about the uh, it's about the first Gulf War, I think. Actually, this is in Saudi Arabia, but I think it's based on the the original Gulf uh, Persian Gulf War, the original war against Iraq in in the early 1990s. Man, remember that? If you want to feel old, think about this. The more time has passed between now and the second Gulf War, which started in 2003 than the time that passed between that war and the original uh, Operation Desert Storm, because I think the original Operation Desert Storm was in 1991. So 12 years separate that from the 2003 Iraq invasion. But now we're 13 years after the, the 2003 Iraq war. So think about that. Just think about how much time has passed. That is crazy stuff, man. I feel old now. Anyway, so this is basically the game. It's, yeah, it's, it's Missile Command. You basically you have... Uh, I'm not doing a very good job here, but basically, yeah, you control that launcher in the lower left, and you click your mouse a lot and try to try to have your missiles hit those missiles that are coming down to prevent them from hitting your city at the bottom there. And I'm doing terribly at this. I'm, I'm letting... Problem is you have to sort of... You have to lead the missiles. You notice I'm clicking in front of the missiles a bit, and apparently I'm not clicking in front of them enough. I actually think I have to lead them even more than I was, yeah. I really want to click in front of these guys because... Uh, Because if you click on where the missiles are now, you'll miss them because you'll you'll be your shots will be trailing them. So anyway, and here's mission number two, which is something quite different. In mission two, you're on the attack, not on defense, but actually on the attack. So what you have to do is you have to dodge these little sort of anti-aircraft flak shots that come up you and try to destroy your Tomahawk cruise missile. Um, this is one thing that stuck out in my mind about Sandstorm. I just like the way that it mixes. Whoops! I missed the target. Oh, that was stupid. I got so focused on dodging these uh, little AAA shots that I actually missed the target. And it was so clearly designated, too. I was just distracted because I was talking and uh, and because I'm stupid. Well, anyway, all right, let's... Wait, where's the target now? Is that the target? I don't I don't even know. Oh, it is the target. How was I supposed to know? It didn't, didn't actually say that was the target. All right, I guess I'm just supposed to know that's the target. All right, so... What I do like about this is the way that it mixes a few different types of gameplay styles. Here, here we're doing, uh, we're controlling a missile with the mouse, whereas in the in the first round we were. All right, there we go. That was finally successful. Game over. Why is it game over? I was successful. Oh, I guess I had. To, I guess because I wasn't successful enough, I only hit one out of three times. So all right, I think the third round is just a repeat of the first one, except with slightly different. Uh, different setting but anyway I like games like this which mix different type of types of gameplay styles together um, I do like some games that uh, aren't just the same thing all the time but have sort of different rounds or different scenarios where you're doing somewhat different things uh, I guess it would be pretty boring if uh, if every game tried to do that it would it would get old if every game was trying to be every type of game in one game but it's, it's sometimes interesting when you see games that do that uh, what else do we have here? Is there anything interesting under here? EJ Golf. It's an actual golf game. Elevators from Hell, I believe I've shown off on my channel before. 
Oh, Jump Jet. Let's do Jump Jet. This is uh, Sophomore Zen Pro 3. This is a game that I, I like very much. Let's just go right into the game. This is Jump Jet. Again, I apologize for the flashing on the bottom. That's due to the somewhat lower screen resolution that's used by this game. All right. Seek out and destroy three bombers. All right. This is Jump Jet. You control a Jump Jet, which basically means a vertical takeoff and landing, or VTOL aircraft. And you press spacebar to shoot, and that was one of the bombers that I'm supposed to shoot, so... Whoops! Oh dear. Instead of shooting the bomber, I got destroyed because I crashed into the bomber and, I guess, took some damage or whatever. Alright, let's try that again. Hopefully with less failure this time. Oh, come on. There we go. Alright. Oh, come on, I crashed into that plane. This is a pretty tough game. No doubt about it. This is a difficult game, and the fact that I'm terrible at games doesn't help, certainly. But, uh... Okay, I just read one bomber. I think I need to get three, if I remember correctly. They're so slow, you can actually kind of get them like that. Uh, and here's another one. Come on. There we go. Mission complete. Return to base. And now we can land here. And now we need to destroy some tankers which will be on the ground. So, let's see if we can find a tanker. You have unlimited shots in this game. But it's still pretty difficult. Even with unlimited shots, it's still very easy to hit something and... There we go, that's one tanker. There's another one. Narrowly dodged that uh, tank fire that I encountered there. And, what was that, a volcano or something? I don't know. I don't know what that was all about. But anyway, uh, tanker is destroyed two. All right, I need three. Let's go in the other direction. Maybe we can find better luck in the other direction. We can you can also destroy those tanks. There we go. There we go. Mission complete. Return to base. All right, very nice. There we go. Oh, now I have to destroy the Head of Doom. This game went from at least somewhat realistic to uh, not quite as realistic very quickly. I mean, shooting down bombers, okay, I can definitely see that. Uh, shooting oil tanks or whatever, okay, that, that makes sense. But now destroying the floating head of doom, this suddenly became uh, a whole lot less realistic. I know it's... If you look at this game, it might seem a bit funny to use the word realistic in this context, but... Uh, at least the premise. Whoops. Darn it. Well, we just kind of saw the floating head of doom on the on the right side there before I got destroyed by a by a floating quadrilateral. And if I go in the other direction, I mean the the game world actually wraps around. So you oh come on. All right, whatever. That's the floating. Oh, the floating head of doom produces those floating quadrilaterals. All right, that's game over. Very nice game. I really very much like this game. This 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 game kind of appeals to my gaming sensibilities, I guess. Uh, something about it that I just really like. Anyway, Jump Jet. Pretty cool game. I do like that it has ad-lib sounds as well. It's pretty awesome. Uh, Alright, and... Uh, nah, let's not bother saving the scores. And... I guess it's getting close to the time when I should finish off the video, but before I do that, I do want to show you folks one game that really sticks out in my memory as being, to me personally, quite impressive. That game is Arcade Volleyball. Let's go ahead and take a look. Soft Mouse AV. Now, this game isn't much, so don't, don't have too much in the way of expectations. But, let's see, there's a doc, doc, doc. So once again, let's look at doc, doc. And... There a uh, there's no uh, okay that's the documentation. There's no instructions. There's actually just uh, it's telling you that the disc is certified, guaranteed from viruses and media errors. Okay, all right. Uh, well, to start the program, I guess uh, yeah, we just oh products. I think oh, let's let's look at products. I think this lists yeah this is a huge list of all kinds of products that you could order from these folks back in the day. Again, just. Just imagine this. Just imagine that you would actually send out mail order for a floppy disk containing 
software just based on this on these titles yeah i want to send off for blackjack one disc i have no idea what kind of blackjack game it is i mean obviously it's blackjack so but you know what blackjack is but but i mean or dos tutor yeah let's send away for two discs for the dos tutor or a game called shoot there's a game called shoot i want to pay money to order that disc just imagine that wow again how times have changed but anyway this is arcade volleyball. I'll uh, let's see. I'll make player one the uh, the computer, so you can play using a keyboard, mouse, or computer. I guess joystick is also possible if you had if you have a joystick, which I don't. But anyway, uh, I don't remember where the keys are. Let me see if I can figure it out. Or actually, I guess I should have played with the keyboard. Yeah, because I don't know what the uh, actually this is kind of bad because I don't know what the keys are now. Um, oh dear, what are the keys? Uh, down is jump. Down arrow causes me to jump, but the other arrow keys don't seem to be doing anything. Hold on. Um, okay, define keys. Uh, so I'll use left arrow, right arrow, and then up arrow for jump. And Oh wait, that was supposed to be me because I'm player two. Okay, can I? Okay, I can use the same key definitions. All right, let's try this again. All right, this is more like it. You can also play this with the with the mouse, obviously. Maybe it's better with the mouse. But anyway, this is arcade volleyball. Now you can probably tell from the color palette that it's a, a CGA game. So there's really not much to this game. I mean, it's it's volleyball. It's two-player volleyball. So what's there to say, right? It, there's really nothing special to it. But if you look at how small the executable of the game is, you really shouldn't expect very much, right? And like I said, don't expect too much from this game. But look at the ball physics and consider this is a game from you know the 1980s from a time when they actually still made games in four color cga like this and if you consider how realistic the ball physics are i mean just look at the ball moving around and, and you can kind of see okay it's definitely not it's not highly realistic uh I mean, it's not uh, like there's some incredible physics engine behind this game that uh, that gives you hyper-realistic uh, physics of a game like, I don't know, imagine any game that uses physics that's, that's being made today. But for a game, for a, a little CGA game like this from the 1980s, this game has physics that just blow me away. The graphics are obviously nothing special, uh, and obviously there's no, you know, there's no music and there's not much sound other than just the, the whistle and the buzzer of the sporting uh, announcements. But just the physics and how smoothly and realistically they made the ball move in consideration of the times and the kind of programming that was available at that time. Just how well they actually approximated the movement of, of real ball physics in a tiny little CGA game like this really just blows me away. And some of you folks are probably gonna look at this and say, really, this is the one game that he wanted to, to end on? This is the one game that he wanted to highlight as a sort of a closing note? Um, but if you've ever written a game, if you're a programmer, you probably have some idea of just what must have gone into making something like this back in those days when, you know, back then they, they didn't have function libraries. They didn't have game development environments that, uh, that have built-in physics that, that do the physics for you. You had to basically program how the ball would move and how the gravitational constants would affect the movement of the ball and how the different angles would change the ball's movement when the ball bounces off the walls or off your character or off the net or something like that. All that had to be programmed in probably assembler language or maybe this was done in basic or pascal or something like that but still just the just the smoothness of the ball's movement and how realistically it responds it responds basically how you the how you'd expect the ball to respond based on the physical inputs that it goes through and for a game like this to do something like that is to me technically impressive and besides all that it's a fun game i mean i can't tell you how much time i've spent playing this game it's really i mean again 
as a game, there's not much to it, and yet it's so much fun. I have so much fun playing this stupid, simple, primitive little volleyball game. I can't tell you how much fun I have just playing this game, and I've been playing it for so long, for so many years since I was a kid, and I still have so much fun with it today, and I'm terrible at it. I mean, I'm not very good at the game. I can barely beat the computer, but I mean, I'm not beating the computer now. I have I have beat the computer in the past, but I'm obviously failing to do so now, but that's not the point. It's just, it's just such a fun little game, and to me, this game really epitomizes, I think, the things that I've often said in the past about games being fun. It's it's not how fancy the graphics are. It's it's really just small, simple little games like this, which somehow do a great job, to, for me, do the best job of capturing how much fun computer games can be and how enjoyable they can be, not only just as games, but as as technical achievements and as computer programs and stuff like that. I just find this kind of thing... I, I just take endless delight in this. I'm sorry. I mean, you can tell that I'm getting very excited about uh, about stuff like this. And and again, I know there'll be people who say, "Really? I mean, this is this is boring as heck. This is this is completely boring to watch." But I'm sorry if if you're bored by this, then uh, well, I apologize for uh, for those. I apologize if anybody feels like I've just wasted several minutes of your time being forced to watch two little ball shaped somewhat anthropomorphic characters with huge noses bounce a volleyball back and forth across a CGA computer screen. If you feel like I've wasted your time by subjecting you to this, then uh, I apologize. But uh, I hope that at least some of you understand what I'm saying and can kind of share my sheer childish delight in what this game is and what it what it achieves with with so little i mean okay let, let's quit out of this for a moment that that was fun but let's let's quit and take a look again at how big the program is folks this game is 37 kilobytes and well okay and there's a a data file next to it which is four four some kilobytes so maybe okay so the whole game put together let's say it's around 40 kilobytes in 40 kilobytes they put together a realistic physics model and made a game that was that much fun and the game dates, I mean, look at the date on the file, 1988. In 1988, they did this with 40 kilobytes. That, that to me, is something very special. But if you, don't, uh, if you don't think so, if you don't share my wonder at this magic, then let's just clear it away, and you can say that was that. I think that's, uh, that's it for me for now. So thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, I apologize if... Uh, if anyone doesn't like what you've seen, maybe some of you think that this whole series was stupid and boring and annoying and uh, I should have been doing something else instead with my videos, but uh, I do think that some of you have appreciated uh, this kind of journey that we've taken through some of the games that we've seen and uh, and enjoyed it along with me, and, and I'm glad that I was able to share some of this stuff with you folks. So thanks for watching everyone I don't know what's uh, what's in the future some folks have requested some let's plays when I'm done with this uh, I assume that of course there will probably be future let's plays on my channel uh, but I don't I don't have any immediate plans in like I said at least the next couple of months to uh, to make uh, future videos so we'll, we'll see what happens I think we'll be seeing each other again but uh, for now I want to say to everyone thanks for coming with me thanks for watching thanks for being there and I wish you folks all the best. Have a great rest of your summer or whatever period of time it is, because if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, then I guess it's your winter right now. So have a great rest of your period of life in which you will experience your human life on this earth. Until next time, folks, bye-bye for now. And uh, yeah, don't... Uh, Again, I'm trying to think of something. Okay, forget it. I'll just say goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.